Welcome to this video. So in this video, we will talk about the health and safety guidelines on petrol station. So let us start with the first one, which is the introduction. So what is petrol station? A petrol station is a place that sells petrol and other fuels such as kerosene oil, diesel and compressed natural gas. Aside from selling fuel, various services to help clients are provided. It contains small auto repair service, a mini market, automatic teller machine also known as ATM card machines, public restroom and also water dispenser units. So there are three types of hazard in petrol station. The first one is physical hazard which is caused by slip, trips and falls and also manual handling. The second one is chemical hazard which is caused by toxin, dangerous chemicals and residue of excess chemical used in petrol station fuel. And the last one is the psychosocial hazard which is caused by work environment and work organization that had been linked to mental problems and physical harm or sickness. Moving on to the next part of this video which is the physical hazard in petrol station. So let us see for the first part of this physical hazard in petrol station which is the sleep trips fall hazard. So sleep happens when there is insecure footing resulting in a loss of balance. Trips happen when there is a loss of balance resulting from contact with an object. And falls happen when there is a fail or missing support. So there are five main potential ad effects caused by sleep, trips, and false hazard. Which is the first one is the minor injuries such as sprains and strains. The second one is broken bones due to the impact when trying to break the fall. The third one is back injuries due to the impact from the fall. The fourth one is cuts if the accident occurs near sharp objects. And the last one is the head injuries if the person eats the head upon impact. So there are three possible causes for these slip trips and false hazard, which is the first one is the flow irregularities and damage. Second one is the flow contamination causes by oil and fuel spilling. And the last one is the general forecourt obstacles like clutters by cables and pipes. So based on the possible causes mentioned before, we have recommended these control measures based on the hierarchy of control to reduce the risk of the slip trips and false hazard. Which is the first one is the elimination with designing the flow with a good underfoot condition. Second one is the substitution, which is by replacing flooring with a more slip resistant surface. The third one is the engineering controls by applying floor treatments to increase slip resistance. The fourth one is the administrative controls by implementing good housekeeping practice. And the last one is the PPE by wearing suitable footwear. So moving on to the second part of physical hazard which is about the manual handling. So removing storage tank covers or lifting gas cylinders or other fluid containers can put workers at risk of serious injury. This may pose a risk of injury to the muscular skeletal system. So these are the injuries and conditions that can be caused by manual injuring hazard which is the first one is muscle sprain and strains. The second one is injuries to muscle ligaments, individual discs and other structures in the back. The third one is the injuries to soft tissues such as nerves, ligaments and tendons. 
and the fourth one is the abdominal hernias and the last one is the chronic pain So how are the workers armed by manual handling? Workers are at risk of injuries from lifting and carrying, particularly when the load is too heavy, it's difficult to grasp or it's too large. The second one is when the physical effort is too strenuous and the last one is when they are required to bend and twist when handling heavy loads. So based on the possible causes mentioned before, we have recommended this control measure based on the hierarchy of control to reduce the manual handling hazard. So the first one is the elimination. We can eliminate the lifting process by putting storage tanks in one place. Second one is the substitution. We can substitute the material of construction for the fluid containers with the lighter yet stronger materials. And the third one is the engineering controls. We can use lift assisted devices to carry heavy loads. The fourth one is the administrative controls. We can conduct work instruction and coaching for the workers on proper lifting technique. And the last one is the PPE. We can wear PPE like knee pads, shoulder pads and also gloves. Next is about the chemical acid. Chemical acid. Chemical acid is a substance, regardless of its form, that can has the potential to oppose physical and health risks to humans as well as to cause environmental damage. So basically the volatile organic chemicals such as the ethanol, methyl butyl ether, benzene, toluene and xylene, which appear in the fuel, can be released during the pumping fuel in a vehicle. Here are some potential health effects which cause to the employees. Firstly, the sleep disorders. And due to the prolonged exposure of chemical acid, it can cause cancer, damage to the internal organs, fertility problems as well as memory loss. Basically, chemical acid, which known as chemical substances, can enter to one's body through certain routes. First of all, inhalation. Breathing in toxic vapors means gas or fumes from the hazardous substance. Next is the skin absorption. Best Hazardous substances can get in onto our skin and also enter to our bloodstream. And thirdly, which is a rare case, where the hazardous substance can be ingested to our body. Some simple control measures. Firstly, in terms of elimination, we can ban, prohibit, or restrict the use of hazardous chemicals. Secondly, substitution, where we can replace hazardous chemicals with the lower physical and health hazards. Thirdly, in terms of engineering control, we can conduct ventilation, either natural or local exhaust. Fourthly, in terms of administrative control, we can implement safety operating procedures. And finally, using PPE, which is personal protective equipment. We can wear glove, footwear, chemical resistant glasses, face shields and respirators when handling the hazardous chemicals. Next is about psychosocial hazard. Social hazard which cause risks that are features of the working environment and also work organization that have been linked to the mental problems or physical harm to the employees. Some potential health effects through the psychosocial hazard. 
Firstly, depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as suicide. Here are some possible causes for the psychosocial hazard. For example, the lone employees, especially those working late nights, may be more vulnerable to the confrontation and even for violence. Next, staff may face violence if they are robbed of items of cash at petrol station. There are some simple control measures. In terms of elimination, we provide a control access to the workplace for the employees. Next substitution, we replace the cash handling procedure with electronic fund transfers. Thirdly, in terms of engineering control, we install the CCTV. And next, the administrative control where we train the workers in dealing with difficult clients and managing the conflicts. Lastly, we provide a personal panic alarm to workers to handle the situation smoothly. Conclusion, all the control and safety measures should follow the guidelines which implemented by the DOSH and NIOS Malaysia. That is all for our video. Thank you for listening. We hope that this video will help you get a better understanding on petrol station hazard and risk and serve this video as a reference for you in the future.